Hello all, I hope you are doing well in these extraordinary times. Uh, welcome to the Fintech Finance Virtual Arena where we're hosting you today. Uh, today, and I'm, I'm quite excited for this, uh, we are joined by Smithy, who represents uh, Stack Finance over in India. How are you doing today, Smithy? Hi, hi Ali. Thank you so much for having me here. I am doing great, as great as a person could in these times. But yeah, really excited to be here. It's uh, almost end of day today here in India. So excited to end it at this note. <laughs> Well, let's talk. We, we let's get straight into it. Let's talk about Stack Finance. So, in, in the first instance, what is it? What's the story? What was the moment that we thought, "Aha! There's a big problem out here. How are we going to solve it?" Yeah. Um, so, um, Stack Finance is essentially a fintech product. We are a fintech startup, essentially into personal finance domain. Now, um, um, as you asked, it was not really a eureka moment for uh, me or anybody in the team for us to come up with this idea of stack finance. Actually, it was very intuitive over the time for us because uh, we've been on that journey of, you know, um, you know, basically managing money, investing specifically. So I personally do not come from a finance background. I am an engineer. Uh, but uh, was really a savvy investor into the stock market and that's when I started using a lot of products around you know trading, investments, uh, mutual funds are really popular in India, banking, credit cards, debit cards etc and that's when I realized how difficult it is to manage money for somebody who's already versed with personal finance. Now forget about people who do not even know about finance or how to manage it. So there were a lot of people who used to come to me, uh, including my family members, even friends, while I was in college to uh, you know, ask about where should they invest, how should they save, uh, what insurance to buy, etc. And that's when I uh, started realizing that you know, um, how uh, complex it seems for uh, an average person, somebody who does not really come from that background or understand finance, to manage money, something which should not be a luxury. So I think that's the only thing we had in mind. We um, so yeah, after that, I guess uh, I met my um, you know founding members uh, over the time, and we started ideating on this thing. What if there was a product that could you know actually automate all of this, actually uh, you know manage money or make uh, money work for people instead, vice versa. So um, that's how Stack Finance came into being. But yeah, I mean, um, interesting story. Before uh, actually making Stack Finance, we used to do this offline. So um, similar personal finance service, but uh, more in an offline or a physical, uh, you know, uh, model uh, rather than a tech product. Absolutely. Well, let's take take a little little step back. Um, step back there. So I know we talk about this a lot, but in uh, we say that at school you're taught quadratic equations. You're not taught what a mortgage is. You're not taught what a share is. What a stock is. Um, why, why do you think that is? Why do you think as, uh, as a society we kind of almost shy away from that level of, of financial education? Because that seems to be the first stage towards financial health is understanding what, uh, what, what, your, what your needs are and, and what the solutions currently are. I think um, I think there are a lot of loopholes in the education system, not just about you know finance. There are a lot of other things also which are important. Um, now all our lives, you know, I mean, it's so ironic that all our lives, whether it's in school or college, we're taught things that would help us or facilitate, enable us to make money eventually, to ultimately then fulfill whichever goal we have. But unfortunately, nobody really talks about how to then manage that money. So I think they just kind of cross check that first goal that you should be able to make money. But then how to manage, how to grow that money, how to um, kind of eventually be able to, in, in fact, be financially independent uh, in your life. Nobody really teaches you that. Somehow, I think, I guess, I'm not really sure, but I think uh, uh, people uh, or the educational institutes, they just believe that, you know, your family members are going to teach you about all of this. Are you going to learn eventually in your life or maybe, I don't know, you're going to experiment with your money. But that should not be so. It's a basic essential. It should be taught right in the school, at least in the college, if not uh, in school. But I guess, yes, uh, nobody really talks about it. There's no formal system of really educating people or uh, students about money, finance, personal finance, especially. So, yeah, I think there is a gap for some reason. I don't know, really. I've never been able to figure out why does that exist. Actually, it, it does seem like, uh, um, for example, when we got our mortgage, um, I, I was asking other people 
my peers, my family members, like, how did it work there? And it, it does, for some of the big things, seem to be ever-changing. Ever um, so with, with that in mind around that, um, that education, where do, does the stack come in in terms of actually kind of educating people around, well, first of all, what personal finance is? Yeah. So um, uh, Stack Finance is essentially, I would say, a super money app that kind of handles everything around your personal finance and money. So it does not essentially mean just your bank accounts or even just investments. It's everything that you would do with your money, including your savings, your cash, your um, assets, your liabilities, investments, credit card, debit card, bank accounts, everything, you know, together in just one single app. So that's why also it's known as stack finance, stacking everything together. Um, essentially, um, it is basically, I'm not sure whether you've heard of Mint in US, I think it's very popular uh, there. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if you have heard, of it, if you might have used Mint, you know that, you know, it aggregates all your financial data in one place where you can get a 360 degree view of your personal finance or, you know, your financial lifestyle in general. But I think one thing that that kind of lacks and the reason I'm trying to bring the analogy of Mint is so that it is much more clearer. I think one thing that I find lacking in Mint is that you cannot really execute things. So for example, if I am able to understand that, you know, my liabilities are much greater than my assets. Now what to do about it? How should I go about solving this problem? Nobody really uh, kind of solves that problem for you. So I think Stack is basically an aggregation per, plus um, an execution platform. Uh, which is but uh, even more personalized and automated for an individual. So I think the reason we want, uh, so there were two reasons we kind of are very passionate. There are two reasons we are very passionate about Stack Finance. One is that nobody really aggregates all financial services together, even though they are so much, you know, dependent on each other. So the kind of insurance you're taking depends upon, that is a basic rule. I mean, it depends upon your savings. It depends upon your investments. Now the investments and savings in turn depend upon your income. And nobody, uh, I mean, there are separate products for all of these things, you know, insurance and investments and banking, etc. But they're so much interdependent that they should be existing in one place. They should be talking to each other. You, you, know, you know, these three, four accounts of yours should be talking to each other. Um, and that is something people miss out on. And especially in India, I mean, the, the, the whole financial system, even the fintech industry right now is very much fragmented. You know, there are different verticals, different products and kind of no link between all of them together. So I think we, we're trying to kind of uh, fill that missing gap and the link, but at the same time making it very much personalized. So it's not just a marketplace or it's just not an aggregation platform. It's much more intelligent than that. So once you've linked all your, let's say, financial footprint in one in this particular app, then it kind of uh, brings upon the intelligence on it. So for example, if you've linked all your bank accounts, your portfolios or anything, now I realize that let's say your uh, you you've taken two consecutive loans, so it will actually be um, you know alerting you that you your liabilities are now starting to increase given your income and everything. So maybe you should kind of retract on it. Second, for for example, if your uh, investment portfolio investment portfolio does not really contain or savings do not have an emergency fund. People now have started realizing the importance of emergency fund. So if, does, if it does not have an emergency fund, we will give you a notification that you need to have an emergency fund and we already have it built in. So you just need to subscribe to it. So that's uh, the level of personalization and intelligence this app brings along with aggregating all the financial services together. We've, um, yeah, we've got to talk about open banking in that case. I mean, in, in the UK um, and Europe, open banking comes in with obviously PSD2 similar regulations across Australia and Singapore and such. What are the, um, if any, what are some of the regulatory restrictions there? Um, or is it something that actually is an enabler for you? Yeah. So, um, Indian, uh, in fact, I think the whole Asian financial system in itself is very much regulated and also centralized um, uh, as compared to US and UK. So I think it's a huge uh, hurdle when it comes to innovations in fintech. Um, so I think um, it's much more closed and restricted and even the government is also much, very much conservative when it comes to you know, coming up with new policies, innovations. And that's why it said that um, you know, Indian policymakers, especially in the, uh, in the financial services, are great at copying other regulations, but they lack at making innovations in the regulations. So um, in terms of open banking itself, 
uh, there there was no concept of open banking for a long time right now uh, in india only recently the government has started uh, you know making or formulating various policies around uh, open banking so it's not yet exactly open in the literal sense but um, they have started coming up with few things so i don't know if you have heard of upi united payment interface in india uh, it was something very much appreciated the move was uh, really great at centralizing all the payment services so i think government is working on a similar concept to uh, towards open banking so they have made a policy where around 6 to 7 companies in india are now allowed to aggregate uh, financial data so they are regulated by the central bank and uh, but they are allowed to aggregate all the financial data of the users now these are some licensed entities so not everybody is allowed to do that and uh, these are still under the beta phase they're still testing out the services and further these services can then be availed by you know small businesses like us or even individuals so that's the first step they've taken towards open banking but i think um, that's not really enough because uh, although the government has uh, come up with this policy but a lot of institutions financial institutes and all are not really ready i mean the technologies their apis itself are way way uh, you know uh, way behind as compared to what what's happening outside india so even if they've come up this with this policy a lot of banks a lot of institutes cannot really provide the data because they do not have their apis ready they do not have the technology ready right now so that's a major blocker but yeah the advantage i think is i think uh, government does sometime come up with um, at least it, it's prompt in terms of copying other regulations so uh, yeah, when open banking came up i think now the government has started taking steps active steps towards open banking it has um, i think upi was a very uh, it, it was a great step towards unifying all the payment methods it's so easy to make any payment right now in india uh, peer to peer payments have become so easy so those are i think few uh, advantages that we've been able to uh, leverage upon one of the um, elements that we've been looking at a lot of these kind of aggregators uh, a lot recently across uk and usa um, and one of the things that seems to be a common theme is they all seem to struggle to get everyone on their books. So there's always whether it be from internal politics there's always um oh you're missing this particular organization there. Um and equally they seem to, there seems to be an issue with bringing in non app based um assets. So for example um I mean a house an asset that you can obviously bring in um but then if you have say a gold krugeran hidden under your bed or something so similar um it's very difficult to bring in those kind of non those are could be tangible assets but to bring them on so how how do you bring the the non app based assets and how do you ensure that you have access to well all of the options available yeah so um obviously i mean there is a restriction over the kind of intangible and um, you know some physical assets that you're not really able to count for um in an app or a tech product it is so uh, um i think uh, the only way out here is for uh, it to be manually uh, you know uh, linked onto the app so for example even right now especially i think indians uh, they invest a lot of their uh, wealth and money into real estate and now that's something that cannot be technically linked you know you do not really have any um, you know um, kind of uh, footprints where you can kind of link that you give me a proper number like a social security number or something and i can just you know figure it out that you have so and so uh, much property lying or you already have bought so and so much net worth of real estate but i think um, that's kind of a problem and especially indians are so much uh, also more savvy of gold so a lot of indians also invest into gold and real estate so those are still very popular uh, you know asset classes when it comes to investment especially in the middle class um so i think the only way out is to manually link it on the app and uh, uh, this is uh, so basically this is what we also have incorporated so uh, everything else can be accounted for all your portfolio into equity mutual funds or anything but uh, yeah when it comes to property and you know sometimes tangible assets like gold and all we kind of have to rely on manual uh, methods absolutely Uh, I've got to give got to give a shout out to uh, uh to Neha um who was our who's I believe is actually currently in Delhi who was our payments racer trying to get from 
I'm trying to get from Hong Kong to Singapore using only gold. So uh, I think that was quite uh, uh, quite apt. Um, let's talk as well. So with all of this information and be able to have that complete view of an individual in terms of their assets, in terms of their spending, um, what's the opportunity there for, uh, for revenue? Yeah. Um, so I think uh, a lot of new banks are struggling with their revenue streams or um, I mean, um, especially I think a lot of new banks have also dipped their valuations because of the same and especially given all this situation of COVID and all. Um, I think the uh, one of the blessings in disguise for us was that in India, you're not really allowed uh, to, you know, uh, they do not really provide a virtual banking license or a digital bank or a new bank. So, so, you know, you typically cannot be a literal neo bank here in India. You really have to partner with banks or anything to kind of, pro, um, you know, provide services around neo banking. So that's a blessing in disguise because uh, we started with that uh, motive, you know, to be a bank and to, to you know, kind of provide the transparency, make more uh, services accessible and affordable for people. But then we realized that uh, it's very difficult if you're not a bank. So, um, we tweak the business model a bit and it is it's really uh, it's been really good for us it's worked really good for us because revenue streams are uh, we do not really rely upon one particular revenue stream in that manner so we uh, kind of work with a lot of partners who are already banks who are already brokers or uh, you know various uh, various other financial institutes also who we work with to provide the products uh, to the users so we aggregate those uh, you know services together then depending on the profile of the user uh, we uh, you know basically give them options that you know maybe these three bank accounts will work good for you or maybe uh, these are the mutual funds that you would want to buy uh, etc so given that um, revenue streams are diverse and uh, and basically uh, they have we have a layered revenue stream in that manner so there are there are some trail revenues that we get so for example if people are making any payments any bill payments especially um, these become our trail income methods because then it's occurring each and every month similarly if people have sips systematic investment plans um, that is also a trail revenue or a trail income stream for us then there is second is we have affiliate uh, revenues affiliate product revenues so by which I mean, if, um, you know, if, uh, if a person does not already have a bank account, does not already have a trading account, we get it opened for them through our partners. Now for each and every, uh, you know, uh, lead that we give to these partners in turn, we get revenue. So that's the affiliate revenue stream we have. Plus, uh, for the intelligence that we're creating on the platform, there is a, an additional charge for that. So there's a premium model as well where a premium subscription model where we give more personalized services like built-in portfolios depending on your goals depending on your risk profile um, that is something we explicitly um, we actually charge for as an advisory fees and all so i think those are some separate revenue streams so you know that is how we monetize various services on different levels in terms of the investing side um what's the what's the opportunity there i mean is there an option that you can almost think ah oh, i can tell from this type of spending that actually maybe you want to be investing in this particular fund here or, the, or this this particular style what, what's some of the opportunities that are available there yeah so um in india it's uh, it's very different so first of all um we have a very um, we have a very narrowed population which actually invests into markets so i think it's barely around three to four percent of indians right now uh, who invest into stock market so the awareness and accessibility to um, investment opportunities are much much lesser as compared to that in us uk um, but then it, when it comes to again investment opportunities or assets uh, asset classes um, stocks are something which we also have uh, similarly we also have a lot of stocks uh, uh, available for investing but I think what's lacking is um, ETFs, exchange rated funds and yeah. index funds. That's a much uh, rare concept uh, here in India. A lot of people don't really know about index funds or what are ETFs. We do not even have a lot of ETFs, unfortunately, in India. Uh, instead, we have a lot of mutual funds. So these are you know, privately managed uh, funds. Um, so we have thousands of mutual funds, but not really uh, a lot of in, uh, you know, ETFs. 
people uh, uh, at some point did not even know about mutual fund. I mean, uh, now there's been a lot of awareness. There's been a campaign by the government also where they, you know, I, I don't remember the tagline, but uh, they have massively promoted mutual funds now. So there's a lot of, you know, um, you know um, basically Indians who have started to realize, okay, if you don't know anything about investing, just invest into mutual funds. But uh, even then, I think uh, uh, people don't realize that how uh, I'm not sure if uh, if you also believe that, but uh, uh, people have still not been able to figure out the difference between mutual funds and what are ETFs, how are ETFs better than mutual funds, uh, what is the exposure difference, etc. So I think that's one thing is really lacking right now in India. I wish there were more ETFs, there was more index funds and people were more aware about this. But yes, I think those are... Um, the opportunities when it comes to investments in India. Um, can we talk a little bit around the brand of Stack? How, how would you kind of almost describe your your culture and how does your personality fit into that? Yeah, um, so I think uh, Stack is something, um, okay, so we wanted it to be um, an anti-financial app, you know. Uh, people think when it comes to various financial apps, especially banking apps, etc. I think people really debtor themselves from using those apps or um, installing these apps because they don't really get the jargon. They don't really get, uh, you know, which button to press, how do I trust this particular um, service or not. So I think we wanted to be just anti of it. We wanted it to be as easy as, you know, using what I know, I don't know. I mean, Spotify or Amazon, it should be as easy, as casual, as fun, in fact. So uh, for that matter, we've also added a social element to it. Um, which we call as Stack Circle. So Stack Circle, um, this was inspired a little bit from Instagram. So where you can basically add uh, your friends and family to the Stack Circle. You can share your investment portfolios with them. You can save together for any goals that you have, maybe going for a trip or something. You can split bills with them. You can directly chat with them, create groups like flatmates or college mates or anything. So uh, that's the fun element we try to bring in. It's working really well. Um, so I think uh, that's the positioning we wanted to create about Stack, that it's it's like a home to your financial freedom, that's what we call it. Um, we wanted it to be, uh, you know, about personal finance, about money, but yet something which is very natural, very automated. You just use it once, you just link everything and forget. Um, it's kind of, The ultimate aim, I believe, uh, what we have at Stack is to make something so automated, so personalized that you can just sit carefree uh, without worrying about where your money is going, how is it performing. Everything can be that automated, I wish. So that's what we're working for. For us, I think it comes very naturally because we, we are millennials. We uh, connect to millennials, other millennials also. And uh, sorry if I missed, but the target audience for this app itself is also young millennials. So we connect with them really well. We know what are the problems we face, what are the queries we have. And this is why I think uh, we've been able to gather a lot of traction without much marketing. Uh, there are so many people who uh, look up to Stack, who constantly are in touch with us about new upcoming features, updates, etc. So I think it's working really well, I think, because the face itself of the, you know, it's like, uh, it's a, it's like a product by millennials for the millennials. So hence it works really well for us that way. I like that. It, it, it's a product by millennials for millennials. That, that works very neatly. You mentioned a lot about, about uh, automation there. What's the, um, what's kind of the, the moonshot? I mean, you, it, the sound of things, are, are you looking to almost be in a position kind of like, kind of like WeLab where you've got a handful of people with 200 plus million customers? What's kind of the, uh, the moonshot, the end, the end goal? Um, the end goal itself is, I think, the vision that we have while we were creating Stack um, um, is basically, again, to have something, um, so we call it Stack Coach. Uh, now, I want to create a Stack Coach kind of figure, which is basically like a personal finance manager sitting in your pocket. So you just tell him a few things about yourself. You know, this is my this is my entire financial lifestyle. This has been my history in like three or four lines, and it should be able to take care of everything else for you uh, from that uh, from that moment. It should be extremely personalized. It should know you really well. If you're you know if you're doing recurring expenses, it should be able to tell you if you are uh, if you let's say if your investment portfolio is not enough diversified. If you are if you are let's say uh, not able to track your money each and every day, it should be able to do that for you. 
so that's the level of um, personalization i want to achieve so you know personal finance ironically right now is not really personal it's very much generic you know the products right now uh, that are available in the market they are much like menu apps marketplaces they give you thousands of options and you just are then confused or you're left to figure out yourself but i just want to create this particular figure um, and i just had this you know this is like a dream to create stack coach which is uh, which is for everybody a for personal finance manager something which a lot of millennials right now in india are not able to afford um, so i just wanted to make it so personalized and scalable that everybody can avail that kind of a service without much uh, cost great excellent well i love asking this question so you have um, snoop dog as the face clana you have uh, will i am is on the, is on the creative board for uh, for atom bank um, what pop culture icon do you think is best suitable for stack i mean one that i kind of always want to put for i'm a big andy circus fan because the man can play anyone put him in a motion capture suit he can play literally anyone it seems that level of personalization but i would put, probably put andy circus forward for you guys but for you who would be your pop culture icon to put forward to to represent uh, stack uh so that's an interesting question um okay uh pop culture icons in india i think would be uh, it would be counter intuitive to have them uh, associated with stack because if you will uh, if you will hear or look at the videos of uh, you know various indian pop songs you will realize that it's all about splurging money over a lot of cars or i don't know where else so going on vacations and all and that is something counter intuitive to our entire thesis of the product but if uh, given a, ch- a chance i would definitely want to have uh, i'm not sure if you've heard of him but ar rahman as probably the the you know i don't know on the board or the brand ambassador of stack because he's somebody who's who has a very who commands respect when it comes to um, the music industry and also somebody who's who's you know ageless uh, everybody literally worships him whether it's millennials gen z or anybody so he's the safest option <laughs> i would want to take Brilliant, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to speak with us today. Uh, where is the best place to connect with you? Where's the best place to find out more about Stack? Uh, it's the website, <laughs> yes, stackfinance.co, and yeah, do also waitlist on the platform. Uh, definitely would love to hear feedback from you on the product, on the service, anything. <laughs>